We got Justin here from Rimpangu Nation, and what did you do today? I played in the LCS 3v3, and I played Drytrons. Alright, and <laughs> what was your final ranking? Uh, we finished in top 8. We lost because of a series of plays with the Burning of a Stack versus a Drytron deck. Uh, the deck was fine. We went next to in Swiss. My personal record I was, about to was say, What's your personal record? 9-1. You know, I had a... Pick You're the carry. Over. You're the carry. Don't want to say that. You know, oh, everybody's part yeah, of the team are. was great. And then I did a 7-1 in the extravaganza the week before. The deck is like a little bit different than that, but it's basically the same. All right, so you guys are just bored of this. Let's just get into the profile. So you did 3 Alpha and 3 Zeta. These are like what I call the Star Drytrons. If you play less, you're just wrong. Bad. Yeah, just bad. Because this always gets rich as well. This can always get Ben 10. <laughs> so like, you always, I just think you should just max them. I did one on one of these. Uh, I know a lot of people like two gamma. I only did one gamma because I'm playing bare minimum. So because I wanted to play as many hand traps as possible to maximize my win rate against the mayor and virtual when I went second. One Dawn Knight, one Manja, one Ava. These guys are all mandatory. Uh, flavor and spice of the week. Not one, but two Cyber Petite Angel. So people are like, why would you not just play purple? Well, because you can start the whole combo with Petite and Zeta. But you can't if you open purple because purple is just useless. So I wanted to play as either the cards are either hand traps or combo pieces. So it's one or the other. So we play two petite. So it's basically like an OCG they play diviner. Our diviner essentially is just two petite and manju, and theirs is just the three diviner. So two petite is correct, and I only play two prep because the Ben 10 number is the same if you play two petite. It's just the same number because instead of three prep, one petite, it's two two. Then to the hand traps, we play 12 if you include orange light. So they play three orange light. That's they pull. What's up with those rarities, bro? <laughs> Look, I have one ulti. We're working, right? We're working on it. But uh, if you play less than three, I think that's just wrong. It's your. <laughs> it's your out to a, a drill, and it hits psycho reader. It's like a basically a gamma. It, it hits a lot of stuff. It's good. It, like, because it hits drill, I think you should just always main it three, three nib, because this is high impact hand trap against like dragon link rocks. It, it hits everything that's basically combo oriented, and you already have a good Eldritch matchup, so you didn't carry. It's a light to make carry, so you main it. And people don't play into it game one a lot, usually, which is just bad, but it is what it is. Uh, three draw. This was like the flex one, kind of, but I was in the extravaganza. I just did one drill and two Skullmeisters, but I did three drill because it's the best versus Drytron, and against Virtual, it's actually decent. Because if they King Long search uh, Lulu and you draw on resolution, they can't use their Lulu to search, even though they can still summon it. But paired with another hand trap, it's good enough. It's a blowout in the mirror. And against Nadir, it's really good because if they go Nadir, search Ecclesia, and they have the dump like Apclone, you can chain it to Apclone, fizzle it, and then they can't use their punishment. Then uh, 3 Ash because this card is just generically good against everything. So uh, the reason that people are way like uh, Virtual a lot more than Drytron is because. You can't play as many um, hand traps in uh, Drytron, but that's because people max out on unnecessary Drytron. So in those spots, I just play hand traps, so then you increase your win rate going second. So against in the Extravaganza and in the LCS, I played against six Virtual Worlds, and I've only lost the one. And I've lost the Dyro against four of those. So I went second, and I won every single game one that I lost the roll against those Virtual Worlds, because all of these together help. So you need those, in my opinion. Otherwise, your deck's kind of unplayable because Virtual is the most popular deck of the format. And then we only played, um, as I said, we're playing bare minimum. So we do the three Benton, which are staple, Natasha, and then Ultimate Nist. Don't play Ruler. Ruler loses to the trap cards. Ultimate Nist does basically the same thing. It's a win condition going first. So yeah, that's it for like the monsters. For the spells, we did three Emergency and three Nova. Pretty standard. Uh, two Fafnir, like I said, we're reducing a lot of the numbers for the hand traps. To keep the deck as consistent as possible and also keep it between like 40 to 42. Uh, Fafnir is actually really busted. A lot of people don't know this, so I'll just educate the masses. If you have a Drytron on the field with the Fafnir and they summon a monster, you can like reduce their level of the monster if you have Fafnir up as long as you control a Drytron. So against Virtual World, that's actually really, really good because say they like summon Lulu, you can reduce the level of Lulu, and if they have GG, they can't like make Charge Award. They, it, it's stuck under a level 5. So it really messes up with the stuff and it makes the first virtual world basically a dud. Against uh, Burning Abyss, it's actually really strong. My friend uh, James, he played Burning Abyss as a third and like 
if you end with fast and a dry trying, he can't really play through it either. So it's like really strong. It's strong against anything that's like XYZ reliant or like level modulating reliant. And then two prep, like I said, I explained why only two. You want to keep the deck to minimum. It's just as consistent. The math is there. I know you guys don't care about math, but I'll tell you guys the math. It's like a 87% open combo with uh, the Drytrons or one dry star Drytron on the Benton or two of the star Drytrons. It's 87%. And if you play three prep, one uh, petite, it's the same thing, but you need the second petite in case you have to combo with it. So then you have the second one for the Ava target. So yeah. And then obviously the one Medionis. I know two is really good against like a slower format decks, but again, you want your deck to be as streamlined as possible to be virtual in the merit when you go second game one. Because game one is the most important. Alright, so extra deck was Zeus, Downer, Blurless, Fucho. These are all staple, obviously. Appaloosa, staple, Sword. Sword, Axis Code. This is a card I've like barely ever made because you usually kill with Sword and you bait out the back row. But this is going to come up if you play against like a back row every deck you needed. Uh, two mandatory uh, Nightmares. Uh, since I don't play purple anywhere in my list, and like punishment's a very like popular card, I wanted to play a grindy card. So when you get against trap decks, uh, the odds of like your first carry resolving if you go second is pretty low. So you play two, so you can help out grind it. Uh, Miraging, uh, it's a negate and also recurs. IP if you get drilled or to end in a better ending point, it's really good. You can like make Apollo with this too on their turn if like you get droplets on your herald. You can go like guy or kaiju. You can go like IP guy that make Apollo or just make a union card. Then you play uh, one on one of the little ones, Link Raven, Anima. So that's the extra. It's nothing like too special like, except for the two union care. So the side is a triple lion too. You want the best card. You max out on this. I know people say you only play one, which is dumb, but you want to see it versus virtual world. You just shotgun it. So they need to have gamma. They need to have like three names to be able to like, make up calamities. So pairing this with a hand trap, it's like really powerful. And I like post game one. If I go second, I have 16 hand traps versus virtual world, so it's enough. Because I only take out one of the drills and put these three in, and because you open six cards. Like, there's a whole set of math behind how you side with the dog, like to, if you open combo, but you need right, three. about math, you said yourself. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care about math, you're right. Uh, three side the best card in the mirror. This is mandatory at three, I think. Uh, the one change I'd make between the extravagance and this weekend is uh, this. This card's really good, but... Skullmaster is really strong, and I expected there to be more prank kids than there were. We only played against one, but like, I didn't even play against it, but... While Meister is good against prank kids, Bell is also just as good, but the main appeal of Bell is that Bell hits Cycle Raider, and Hikuera, and Sanguine, like a lot of other cards. Don't tell them. <laughs> I I wish I played Bell instead of that, and I realized after round one, like, I needed more outs of this, so I just wish I played Bell instead of it, but that's fine. Um, then I played uh, Two Dark Ruler. I wanted, like, something to cover like non-combo decks that were not dry Tron virtual world but i still saw this in in the mirror obviously to dark ruler to, to hit bandy ruler and uh ultimateness but this is good against uh like the rock deck so if they, even if they dwell you you still just zeus them through the dweller and then you have zeus for the fall turn you beat them because they don't end with a lot of resources and against like heroes fun fact you can't drop with dark loss if dark ruler comes up <laughs> And like other stuff. So I know like the only like issue is that Zexel will more likely resolve on you if you don't play droplets, but you play orange, you still just take the statistic on that and like there's like a chance like they don't even play that. Uh so then I played um triple twin uh and reboot as my back row hate. I think twin is just better than storm in multiple reasons. Against prank kids you hit the pandemonium before they can even fuse. It's a better like late game card to out floods if you already have like a Fafnir up so you can't even like lightning storm. But you can hit like rivalries, you can hit Mystic Mine in a grind game. It's just like way better. So I think three of this is correct and it's just like better than storm because people be are citing anti spell now. But yeah, I just think twin is just better. And then reboot obviously for the trap decks, it's hockey. Yeah, secret village. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, like that is not be secret village, but uh, I feel like you're dumb if you don't play Reboot. It's just an auto win versus a trap deck. So, like, why not play it? And then you just Zeus them. Like, with Zeus, like, Reboot is just, like, staple. And the last card is the one call by. Um, I know, like, I thought about the Millennium Eyes, and I did have the spot in the extra deck. The issue was I didn't want to main it, like I said. I wanted to maximize hand traps when I went second. And, yeah, like, the whole point of the deck is just, like, I think it's better than virtual world if you both like are playing the game with very low cards so against trap decks the sec is better doesn't lose that like needle healing and stuff but like i said people prefer virtu virtual world because of um because of because of calamities and the more hand traps 
But uh, now that people are doing some extra spice in virtual world, it's another reason why you should play Ghost Spell, I think. But that's the only change I'll make. Uh, the difference between this list and the Extravaganza list, uh, the extra deck, I can't remember if I... I think I didn't play Apollo, and I played um, Cerberus, but that's, that's wrong. I would just play Apollo now, I think. And these Dark Rulers were Droplets, and I only played two Cycle Readers, and the Meisters were in the main, and the Drills were here. But like I said, I think this list is just way better. That's why I never posted it. I just made the changes like a week later of what I liked more. But yeah, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this. And I think that uh, the more hand traps are better. Otherwise, uh, if you lose die rolls against virtual world, you might as well just uh, lose the match. Because they will just uh, beat you game three if they go first. Alright guys, hopefully this is that. And Justin Singh is out here with Repenting Nation making more videos. Alright. You got any shout outs? Yes, I have shoutouts. Why do I keep forgetting about shoutouts? Thank you, Larry. See, this is why Larry, he, he's the great saver. Alright, so shout out to my team, first of all. Uh, well, my team for the 3v3 is Marcus Hayden, James Schrader, and myself. Marcus played the same exact deck list I did for his uh, Drytron deck, and uh, James played BA. I will uh, get his uh, profile up uh, with like his card choices and talk about it, but uh, his deck list is online. Uh, uh, shout out to my team at West Gaming. Uh, shout out to Nick Curry for giving me all these cards. That's good. Shout out to my boys, uh, Larry and Sean, and uh, I don't know where Brandon is. Oh. He's somewhere. Yeah. For also taking part, you know, Cincy Squad. Shout out to my locals, Plus One Gaming. Good uh, testing and stuff. This uh, shout out to Elise, you know, for always just being there and supportive. Sometimes occasional testing, I guess. Shout out to uh, my girlfriend, Sarah, just for being supportive. I mean, playing Yu Gi Oh! Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Shout out to Christopher, a cool apartment. <laughs> Shout out everyone. All right, cool. If I forgot you, please don't hate me. But, oh, well, actually, one more thing. Shout out to Christian, because uh, he told uh, James to play Crescendo, which, by the way, yeah, Crescendo Search is That's the beginning. All right, thanks, guys, and that's it. All right.